Hey, thanks for tuning in. On today's episode, we talk about how to get started turning your business into an online brand. What the first things you should be doing are to take those steps that move you towards being online. Check it out. Hey everyone, and thanks for listening to this week's episode of Brands on Brands on Brands. If you are new to the show, I'm Brandon Berkmeyer. I'm a brand strategy and marketing expert. I've worked 17 plus years at advertising agencies with businesses like Coca-Cola, Walmart, Apple, and Jack in the Box, to name a few, on their marketing strategy. I currently help retail businesses, small businesses, and entrepreneurs to develop their brand strategy and marketing approach to drive long-term sales growth. Before we get started with this week's episode, if you want to get started building your brand online, go to brandonbrands.com to download my free online branding checklist. All right, all right. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're talking about how to get your business online, how to build your brand in the digital world, things to think about, what the steps are you should be taking to get you moving. Get out of planning, stop thinking about it, and actually start taking action. What are the first things you should do? The first thing I want to cover is your mindset. The marketing mindset you need to have to take those first steps and to be able to endure throughout the process. Marketing is not a one-step process or one-step project that once you've turned it on, it works on its own. It's a journey that continues and once you start will be a part of your business uh, that will need maintenance and will need optimization and will need an investment of time consistently uh, always on every day always working so part of the first step into building your business beyond the brick and mortar and taking it to being a brand is to think about what those commitments are that you're willing to make to make this happen. There are a few things you obviously need to educate yourself first to prepare yourself for the ride, but part of the first step is to figure out who's working with you, who's on your team. Are you doing this all yourself? Are there people that can help you? Do you have managers that have time to put towards marketing each week that you can give certain jobs? Because you know as an owner, you're not going to have the time to get everything done yourself. And part of that process is knowing what to delegate. You need to be the one leading the ship, steering the boat. And it's important for your business that you understand the marketing, the inner workings, the processes, because you're the main keeper of the data. It doesn't mean you have to be doing everything yourself, but you definitely need to start out in the weeds, getting involved, knowing how things are being set up so that you can be there to give the direction that's necessary. You need to be able to recognize winning tactics and people that are executing in the way that drive performance. And you're not going to be able to do that if you're not involved at the outset. You're the connective tissue across the company and across time. As your employees turn over, if you let someone else take those first steps to building the foundation of your marketing programs, when that person leaves, you're going to have to start from scratch if you haven't been there from the beginning. Once things are set up and moving, there is a lot that you can hand off that is easy to train and pass on if you've been there from the beginning. So don't worry that this is a time intensive pro process the entire way, but at the very beginning, you definitely have to figure out, do you have a window of time you can commit to this because it is something that's gonna draw you away from your day. And if you don't have the time to spend, you're gonna be the roadblock, you're gonna be the bottleneck that keeps the programs from moving forward and that delays every step of the process and turns what should be a simple one, two, three week startup to something that can take months if you aren't moving your feet and people are waiting on you. And as you're starting this process, one of the most important things I could tell you is to start now. If you have the time to commit, start now. It's not gonna get any easier tomorrow or the next day. Once you have the energy and the passion and the motivation to do this, get moving. You don't have to have all the information figured out perfectly you don't have to have the perfect plan. You just need to start moving because every day you delay is one more day farther away from reaching your goal that you are. 
especially with marketing, it's better to just start moving, finding priorities and tackling them one at a time because there's so much that can be done in this space. So taking that first step as soon as possible is the most important part of the job. And then you have to figure out how do you make decisions quickly and how do you make them at the speed of business to keep this thing moving. My first recommendation is to use the info at hand. You're not going to be able to know everything before you make decisions. The best thing to do is to look at what you have in front of you, make the best decision you can because nothing in marketing is permanent that isn't changeable, optimizable, controllable. Obviously, you have to stay away from things messaging-wise that might affect your brand, have guidelines for that kind of stuff, but I'm talking about the inner workings of pulling the trigger on running something or not running something or setting something up, building a website, building a marketing campaign. All that should be moving and not waiting on it being perfect in terms of the look or the feel or whatever it is. You should be testing a lot of things at the beginning to see what works and to see what doesn't work, and as you learn, it will start to get better. But you're not gonna be able to do that if you haven't tried lots of things. Looking at your different products, seeing what resonates with customers, seeing what kind of language it takes to move them from A to B, understanding which value propositions resonate the best or work at different times of day or different times of year. All that is something you have to keep testing and trying. And then leave room for yourself to change and to pivot. The best part about marketing is that you will have the opportunity to change things multiple times. And that's what you should lean into, that the mindset of change. You are going to pivot multiple times throughout this process towards what seems to be working the best or towards new hypotheses that you want to test. So step back, look at what you're doing, think about the opportunity gained by starting now, not the opportunity lost by something you may have missed because it wasn't perfect. Think about how much time you can save if you don't wait the extra day, extra week, extra month to make it perfect. Every day that you are learning, you are moving forward. And that's part of the momentum driving actions that you can take to keep this thing afloat. And I can't impress enough how much time is a factor and an asset that you need to be leveraging. The reason I say get started now is every day that you are not doing something, your competition is. Use that info at hand that I was talking about, but don't be a hero, be a leader. Figure out how to set the vision, how to get out of the way of the team that's working for you, and to let them be the ones championing the decision making at the lower levels so that you can keep moving. If you try to do everything and be a hero, you're gonna get nothing done because when everything's a priority, literally nothing's a priority. Everything is stalled waiting for that next decision to be made. So to be truly a leader in the organization, you have to let things go. Make the decisions that need to be made and hand the rest off. And then of course, make yourselves available to answer questions, to be there for your team when they come to you with what needs to be done. Set up check-ins, find ways to communicate that give you the insight you need to help make decisions to help keep people moving. Have them bring it to you. Set up those guidelines of how you're gonna work together so that you're not in the way, you're actually enabling and empowering them to take ownership of projects. And once you start to hand off those projects that are more ownable, you'll have more time to be there for what's important. What's the value of a clear mind and a, a little more time on your desk? Well, you can actually focus on priorities. You can think about each week, what is the number one thing or number two thing I need to get done today to move my business forward, to actually make an impact on sales? Those priorities and not getting trapped in the minutia that happens every day, in the fire drills that go off, in chasing down emails and other questions that come up, not being tackled by all those different dilemmas of your day allow you to focus on the priorities that actually move your business. The distractions can literally drown you and make everything move at a snail's pace. The more you can focus on what's important and also on the things that you're either good at or passionate about, the more effort you're gonna see is actually driving change in your business because when you're doing the things that you're good at or the things you love, you're actually spending that time in a much more valuable way. So delegate the things you're not good at. Have the humility to know that even if 
you can't do it, someone else probably can. Or even if you are the best at something, someone else can probably do it to a pretty good enough level to get it done and make room for you to do things that are more important. Delegate everything you can, literally everything you can. Find a way to automate it, find a way to systemize it, make a process out of it, or find a team member that can handle it to a degree that you're happy with the quality, and then let it go so that you can focus on your bigger projects. And what's the best way to ensure success with a process like this? Well, you need to set up guide rails along the way. You actually need to write down all the different steps that you guys are gonna to take together and systemize your marketing execution. That means at first you're gonna be winging it and working together and figuring things out, but you should be recording these things along the way. Every step you take, you should try to document that process so that it's repeatable, so that when you're doing it the second time or when a new person comes on, they are following the guidance that you've set forth based on your first time doing it. And then write down those steps, establish the benchmarks for success, see how those steps worked. Maybe there's ways to, at each different step, find out if there was a, something that worked or didn't work that you wanna to try to do better. You, do, you know, change one thing at a time each time you iterate or each time you try something or a new, run a new campaign. You can look at the process and say, where did it seem to work? Where does it seem like we have some ideas to make it better? Record everything, write down the steps, establish benchmarks for success, and then optimize along the way. And then look at how you can turn the teams that work with you into marketing people, into marketing managers. They could be learning along the way. A lot of them would find it interesting to take on jobs outside of their normal day-to-day, -day, or maybe they're your marketing people already. But you should be able to turn your team into marketing managers. At different levels, a lot can be learned just by trying and doing a little bit of education research around one particular tactic. And then again, they can record what they've learned and pass it down to the next person. Why should you let your team help you? Well, A, because they deserve it. They most of the time are doing work that could be more inspiring and this could be the thing that helps them feel like they're a part of the organization, that they've taken on responsibilities that are a little bit more important, a little bit more interesting than what their day-to-day -day is, that they can strive for a bigger position and bigger role within the organization because they're helping with different types of projects. The other reason why is you know they want to do it. They're motivated, they want to grow, they want to stick around, they want to feel like they're contributing, and you need help. So it's good for you and it's good for them. You can't do it alone, so when you have inspired people that find you know growth as something that they are looking for, this could be the thing that you both benefit from along the way. Of course, when you're working like that, you're gonna to need to set up some kind of training. You need to find out where people are strong, where they're not, how, if you, and if you're not strong in those areas, you probably need to bring in someone that knows what they're talking about to get things moving, to do the training at the beginning, to help set up some of your initial best practices. You don't need to hire a brilliant marketing person to work with you every day of the week. You could just bring in someone here or there to help you with the steps of the process. The first big projects set you up, get you moving, bring them back in when there's you know questions or things you need to make new decisions on so that you are learning from the best and then carrying that on as something that the, the organization has learned from. So yeah, pick one task at a time. Study the process, learn, and grow in your marketing programs. It's not something you just hire and, and leave alone for someone else to do and you're not a part of it. Bringing someone in, A, it's gonna save you time and money, uh, time especially, but money because you're not hiring someone to do it all for you. You're hiring them to educate your company on the process since you've never done it before. And you don't want to waste the time doing it the wrong way or spending hours and days and weeks trying to learn something that you're not an expert at. Now with all that said, you are going to need to keep some things for yourself. You're going to need to figure out along the way what are the important pieces of the process that I need to make sure are ownable. In my mind, those things tend to be anything related to your mission or the goals that you are navigating towards. You need to be the one to do that check to make sure that everything that you are trying to accomplish flows from your original mission. If you're trying to be the best this or have the uh, 
a product that does that in a certain way or has a certain experience with the customers that is repeatable you need the one that's you need to be the one that's navigating towards that mission and everyone needs to understand what that mission is and it comes from you it comes from how you explain it to them and it comes from you double checking along the way that it's being followed in the way that you were imagining it in your mind because only you only that main person that comes up with the business understands the vision for it as you see fit otherwise if you put that ownership in someone else's hands they're going to do it the way they imagined it in their head and if it doesn't match with the way you've thought of it or with the way you were hoping it would turn out then you only have yourself to blame because that vision is yours alone it's your company it's yours to figure out you know how to steer the ship you decide the core products, you decide the key services, you decide the customer service level that is associated with your business. You're the quality control for your message, for your customer experience, for literally everything top to bottom once it's out of the box and people are out there judging what you can do. So yeah, you're the captain of the ship. You are the master approver. Everything that goes out you should be making sure it's of the quality you want it to be. Be that check-in, be that last line of defense. Don't be there at every step of the way, but before it starts hitting customers and the people that matter that make the, the buying and make the purchases for your company, make sure that before it's public, you are that final quality check, you're that master approver. Uh, the captain is the one in charge of making sure the ship's going the right way. Of course you need lookouts. You can't have you know, vision everywhere in your business. So you need to set some core people up, some core processes up to make sure along the way that you are still following the direction that you set, that you're avoiding the icebergs, you're avoiding the pitfalls, that you are looking out for red flags along the way. Because literally there's no direction without vision and the team around you are the feet on the ground. They're the ones closest to what's happening uh, out there in the field with the customers, in the stores, with your products. They're the ones you have to rely on to be reporting back to you what they're seeing so that you can steer the right direction. They're the vision and the reporting back to you and you are the one steering based on what you're hearing from them. You can accomplish amazing things as a group, as a team. The best laid paths have been executed by big teams of people you might have a great creative mind but it takes a, a team it takes a village to really build out that vision the trick to it all is to know yourself what do you do best where should you be focusing your time that company is at its best when you're doing what you do best so what is that thing why is the company at its best when you're doing your best well because you're great at what you do you're great at that thing that you're passionate about the thing that you've been building this business around is usually the thing that that is your main project and as you started the business you took on other responsibilities and that's not what what's going to get you to the finish line if you want to make real progress it's going to be when you are doing what you do best and others are going to get a chance to shine helping you with those other projects that they can handle just fine maybe not as good as you could but they can handle it or they can sometimes handle it better than you or you bring in someone that, that can handle it at an expert level but it frees you up I can't emphasize that enough when you are doing what you do best it really frees you up to focus on what's important and not get bogged down by all the stuff that's not so priorities we talked about a little bit in terms of setting priorities and not getting stuck in that decision paralysis that you get stuck in when you are doing literally everything the main thing is to focus on what's important. You know, how do you know what's important? How do you know what's a priority? Well, you go through the list. What is all of our projects for the day? What is out there that actually moves a business? What are the critical things that need to get done today, tonight, that slows everything else down or that directly affects sales of the product or that it directly affects our marketing success? You know, maybe you're worried about designing an ad when you should be worried about once the people land on your website how they're converting to actual business so look at each step of your business and figure out priority one for today if all else doesn't get done this week or this day what is the first thing that makes the biggest change in my business and focus on those priorities have a clear list top to bottom and evaluate that list every day because each day you'll add a new item to the list but it needs to be ranked according to the others 
and the others that are on the list, they might be re-ranked each day based on what's going on outside, you know, in the macro environment. So set a clear list of priorities and then set time aside to tackle those priorities. You, If you're not calendaring a time in your week to handle, you know, a one hour, two hours, specific marketing tasks, you're never going to get to it. It's going to be the last thing on your mind because it's not one of those things that is as obvious in terms of your business being ran. So you have to make time for it. You have to put it on your calendar each week. Be beholden to your calendar and your schedule. And then you'll actually see progress against those critical priorities. And if you're not wasting your time with things that are lower on the priority list, then that those two hours will be very valuable for the progress of your marketing programs. And then once you've set time aside for those critical activities, make sure you just have a little bit of extra time there for timely check-ins with your team to make sure along the way in those three, four, five days where you're not as available that you get to hear what's happening real time so you're not a week behind on making real time decisions that can help your business. They need to be managed in terms of knowing what's an important enough thing to check with you on but that'll come over time and with experience. Uh, if it's a new person, make yourself more available or even check in more proactively. But once you have a rhythm to it, they should know what the things are that need to come to your attention or you should be working with them on that education so that they understand what's a critical piece that you should be taking your time out of your day for. Now, when you're trying to think about how much time you should be spending on your marketing, that's a tough, bit of a tough question because if you do it based on how much time you have available in your day, sometimes it'll be zero and that's not good enough. So yeah, again, you have to be proactive about it, but I would start with, once you have that list of priorities, make your project list out and say, okay, based on the first two projects on my list, say you're building a website and you know that to get that website moving, you have to deliver a core set of assets and provide a little bit of direction or feedback on a build or on a design look or on how your products are being described. If you know that those are some of the core steps, then you can make time to specifically handle that as your first key project. And then you know that there's projects along the way that could be moving along, but if your main priority this week or this month is website, that's where you should be allocating your time. And then it won't feel like you have an impossible amount of things to do. You are picking one project at a time that helps get you from A to B. So take that project first mentality and then once you have a project first mentality, you might be able to bring in a little bit of help to figure out you know, what to do to get those things done and help you figure out a timeline. Bring in an expert, bring in a consultant, bring in someone to say, well, based on these things you want to accomplish, I'm gonna to need to check in here, here, and here, this, you know, I need an hour today, 20 minutes this day, and then at the end I need, you know, another 10 minutes just for you to approve a couple of things along the way. Or just I need you to look out for an email on Thursday and be responsive to it because that will be what makes us be able to get approval to take the next step. You know, little things like that. It's just communication and having someone help you figure out along the way what the next steps are for your business. And if you want a real number to it all, just assume that at first, especially, you're gonna need at least a full day of activity focused on marketing. It doesn't have to be all in one day, but think of it like that. You know, If you need to dedicate eight hours in your first couple weeks towards meetings and understanding what all the building blocks are and what all the projects you need to set up are, try to find that space. It could be at the end of your day or in the middle of your day. You know, Maybe you have a 24 hour day, but you have to find a couple hours a day to dedicate towards this at first. And then based on those first couple days, you'll be able to fill out, am I getting enough done? Or ask the team, does it feel like we need more time? Are we getting stalled out on projects? Just be real open with getting feedback. Say, hey, I need you to tell me when we're, when we're getting slow. You know, when there's a critical project and you needed a response in an hour and it took me three or six or a whole day, you know, what are those things? And then figure out how much more time you need to allocate to get it done. Or maybe you were you feel like the meetings are moving along fine without you and you can take a little bit less time. But start with a couple hours a day or eight hours a week and say, okay, based on this, I can ratchet up or down how much effort's needed towards this program. And another thing to talk about, you know, when talking about getting started and really all these priorities and projects and people, the employee engagement I will keep harping on because building the team that does this is what's gonna get it to move. 
if you don't have the right people, I don't know how many times I've seen it where you think you delegate someone, but that person just doesn't have the time to get it done, or you say that you're gonna be the one to take care of it, but you don't really have the time. Picking that team of people that actually are responsible and know that it is their job to put time towards this is key. So that employee engagement in terms of the time that they can actually put towards something uh, is important. And keeping them engaged and excited about the process, giving you know, making this something that they actually learn from, benefit from, is everything. It's that passion, it's that, that work ethic that will come through when they're excited about what they're doing. They will think about this as you know a career, not a job. It's something that will actually be helping them towards their future. So make sure you find someone that these kinds of tasks are important for what they're trying to do long term for themselves. You know, it has there has to be some alignment, some synergy between what you're asking them to do and their expectations or their goals for their own career. If they're not aligned with this project, find someone else that is, or bring someone else in at a different level that, you know, whether it's part time or freelance or whatever, it's someone in that is focused on this that will be around and is engaged in the process. People love to grow and hate to be redundant. So a lot of the time your current employees can get this done and will be excited to do it. So, you know, think about how to keep them engaged in that. And also just realize that there's some reciprocity there. When you give people in your business some trust and you allow them to take on projects that are bigger than their current roles, a lot of the time that investment you make in them, they put back tenfold into the business. There becomes an emotional connection between the work they're doing and the value they're providing and what you get out of that. The the business is just a job until it becomes something where they see themselves as a part of the company and see growth within themselves and the company going hand in hand. So invest in your, your team and in the employee engagement along the way. Uh, and then you'll see real value coming out of this. You know, Don't be the person that thinks of this as something that you're trying to get done as quick as possible at the lowest price possible because it doesn't work like that. And I can't say it enough, stop wasting time trying to do it yourself. Stop wasting time trying to save money by being the person that you know is the hero and does literally everything by themselves and learns everything by themselves. It's If you're the one responsible for the business, you can't also be the person responsible for every step of the marketing process. You just don't have the time to learn it. It's too much. Uh, and literally, the rest of the team can take it in bits and chunks and you have to find a way to do it together. Uh, it's not a one-man show on this kind of thing. And though you may like to think it, you're probably not a jack of all trades. Uh, it's not the kind of thing that everyone can be an expert at and be great at running a business and all the other things that you, you're probably great at. Now, while you can't be a jack of all trades, you can master a couple of them. You can pick a couple of things that you think are the most important pieces of your marketing program and continue to dive deep into those processes and learn and be the one engaging your team about learning those things. If search is the hugest piece of your business or your email list is the biggest part of your business or referrals is the biggest part of your business, dig into that. Learn as much as you can. Have your team learn as much as you can because those priority projects you should be an expert in. You should try to master as much as you can about those couple of things. Just don't try to do it to everything. Don't try to master web design and email and CRM and Facebook ads and everything else, brand messaging. You have to find people to take on these projects one at a time. Uh, and it can't be you every time because you're not gonna be able to get anything done in a timely manner if that happens. So to wrap up, if you want to take the first couple of steps, you wanna get started and finally get your website built or your website refreshed or to start building your brand presence online with your social media, your listings, with your profiles, your content that you are creating that tells your story and brings people in. All of that starts with a couple of simple steps, but the first of which in terms of importance is going to be your marketing mindset, bringing on a team, setting priorities, and figuring out how you're gonna get it done. If you don't have a plan on how to get it done, then when you actually have a plan to do it, no one's gonna be there to execute it and you're just gonna be taking on what comes at you. And the first way to, to fail or to really turn a one month project into a six month project is not have a plan of attack. It's not to figure out who your generals are, who your soldiers are, and how you all are gonna be steering the ship 
and finding time to check in and building those processes. Again, it's a big journey, marketing. It's a valuable journey. It's one of the few things that in your business, when you invest in, actually comes back to you in terms of ROI. It's a tax write-off. Whatever you, whatever helps you get to you know, the right place with it, there's a lot of very valuable pieces to your business, but marketing is one of them that actually will help you grow as opposed to stay where you are or fall off. Uh, marketing has, obviously covers a lot of gamuts, but let's talk about just getting you online. Step one, getting your marketing mindset right, and then opening the door towards all the opportunity that lays out there in this new digital world. So I hope that helps. I hope that you've at least been inspired to take some first steps to take action. If you get a chance, go online, check out my online branding checklist to get you started to see where you're at uh, and hopefully to get you moving towards bringing that business online and opening up the opportunity for growth. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate your time. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for listening. If you've received value from any of these episodes, please take the time to leave me a review on iTunes. Let me know what you learned, why you listen. It helps other people discover the podcast and it helps me build the podcast around the topics that you find interesting. It's my goal to build content that actually provides you value. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Talk soon.